Let's talk kickers. <laughs> Both of our uh, <laughs> opportunities to end these, these sessions have been uh, come down to a tie, last play, last last second kick, and uh, uh, which just highlighted um, the consistency that Jason Myers showed for us. He he, he did a great job throughout uh, this off season. We we're really fortunate to have him. Um, just consistency was really there and, and uh, leg power and all that working together with uh, with Michael and and, uh, and Tyler Rott those guys did a great job so we're, we're, we're uh, that move that we made to get him I think is going to work out great for us and it's going to give us the confidence to to utilize the kicker like you like you'd hope to in uh, crucial situations long long balls when we got to go for it um, you know we're gonna we're gonna be playing with a lot of confidence in that regard so he did a great job so I'm really happy that you know and to have Michael too you know we love what Mike can do so really feel good about that part of the kicking game it just kind of just jumped out at me that here we go again and I gave him three chances here at the end and he hit them all and again as he did in the last camp too so um, just good stuff anyway so we ended up and uh, we've had an excellent off season. Um, these guys have done everything we've asked for. We have an attitude uh, of, of pushing to the next, what's next and what, what's coming up and always looking forward and positive and supportive of one another. Offense, defense is mixed really well. I love the way the coaches have uh, uh, made our, our sessions really where the players have been held accountable throughout. Um, they've been tested on a regular daily basis and, and uh, it's just gotten become part of the norm and, and we're, we're, I think we're communicating better than we have because of it. So um, everything's rolling. Anything you learned about your team over the off-season program that you didn't know going in? Um, Phil, um, after seeing Mike Ayupati, you know, come in and, and fill a spot that was opened up, um, really feel great about that and the way he mixed with with uh, with Dwayne and, and communicating with Justin and that on the left side just really feels you know, gives us confidence. Uh, Georgie Fant too, what he's doing, how we're playing him, moving him around. Um, last year at this time, George was wasn't doing anything on the edge. You know, he's playing all tackle. Now we come back with a real clear um, idea of what he can do and how we can utilize him. And so we're just so much farther ahead in that regard and, and taking advantage of the mismatch that he creates. And uh, you know, there's there's not very many 329 pound tight ends in the NFL. You know, and and so uh, uh, it is it's fun to be huge. When you say mismatch, you mean his route running, right? Exactly, down the field stuff. He's scorching up the seams. He owns the seam route, matter of fact. How do you assess the safety position right now? Um, it's a little bit difficult because Bradley's not out there. Bradley really has been the leader and the, the best communicator for us and just the experience and all of that. So, uh, and, and then Delano Hill hasn't been there. And, and Delano made a big push at the end of the year, and he's the guy that really thinks in the mix. So um, it, we're going to have to reserve judgment a little bit, you know, how it's going to wind up in the starting spots. Uh, it was really good for the younger guys to get the reps. Um, uh, Amadi got all kinds of turns. We, we missed out also uh, on, on uh, Marquise, you know, not getting his time. So it's going to be an interesting spot when we come back to camp. There's gonna, we're going to have to make up a lot of ground there. Um, I think Bradley, uh, Bradley is scheduled to be fine first day of camp and should be you know, out there going. Um, that'll be really important. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll help us continuity-wise. And T2's played really well for us all, all along and been really consistent. So that's been good, but um, there's going to be some comp there that's really interesting to see what happens. How's the, how's the evaluation of the defense been when Jaren's not doing stuff, KJ, Bobby, Bradley, all up the middle of your you defense can't be you out there? answer that yourself? <laughs> well, it, well, it, no, there's, yeah, we have, we're using our imagination. I mean, that's what I tell you. We're using our imagination right now. There's six or seven guys that, that we think will wind up playing a lot of football for us that we're holding out right now. So. Um, but those guys will be ready for camp and, and ready to roll, and, and uh, you know it'll be it'll be a pretty nice group. I'm really, I mean, I'm really excited about Bobby, KJ, and, and Michael. Those guys bring tremendous experience and, and playmaking, and um, more than we've ever had. And so I'm anxious to get those guys on the field at the same time and see what they can do. I think they're going to help other guys play well. I, I mean, I know they will. Their communications and the savvy that they bring, you know, that's that's all you could ask for. So um, it, it's going to be a really fun group to, to put together. What's Marquise's timeline? Is he expected to be back for a start of the Absolutely, game? yeah. He's a couple weeks away from right now, so he'll be, he should be absolutely fine. we got to make sure that he, when he gets back in here that you know he has rehab properly and we won't see him all throughout the whole time. We'll see him some of the time, but uh, so but he should be fine. It's a regular hamstring on about second degree. On the safeties, Pete, do you see Bradley McDougall as equally adept and free and strong if you need him on that? Yes. Yeah, and we've moved him around, you know, and, and liked him great wherever we could play him, you know, and, and wherever we needed him. And uh, because he's such a, an adept coverage guy, one-on-one -on -one guy, that uh, he's, he, 
we have no restrictions on playing them and wherever we need to. So we will. He will get matched up at times. He, he we will put him in spots uh, depending on who we're playing because of that flexibility. It's nice to not have any kind of turmoil hanging over like potentially divisive contract situations or uh, bad articles or things like that. That's been in the past. Geez, I never noticed those. those <laughs> we've had those in the past. Um, yeah, it, it, this has been. You know, you guys can try to do something about this, but it's been pretty. <laughs> It's been pretty, pretty, uh, pretty smooth, and uh, you know the, the the attitude really. This this locker room coming from last season, you could tell that it was a, it was a special group, and they they have a way about themselves where they really care about getting along. They want to get along. They want to be part part of this thing together, um, and they've been very open about that. And so it's it's been a great group to work with. It really has been. I've been so excited about it because every day they come and they're having fun and they're working hard and they're pulling for one another and and they're competing too. You know, so. That's really that's that's as much as we could hope for at this point. And now we got to come back and get really good. You know, we got to get good at, at all kinds of areas. And and uh, the makeup and the mentality is really right in there. We're, we should be fine there. On the linebackers, where does Barkevius Mingo fit into things right now? Well, he he still is a Sam backer for us. You know, and, and can do that. But we're also all, always going to continue to work. As a matter of fact, if you watched in this camp, he worked a, a lot with Clint uh, in the pass rush stuff because we want to really accentuate that for him and, and not divide his focus. Last year, it was Sam backer and a little bit of pass rush stuff, and he never really got to dig in. Uh, you know, he, he can he can make problems for the for the opponent. You know, because he's so fast and he's so long. So we were really trying to um, accentuate that. Um, and we'll do that again through camp. And we want to really specialize him as a rusher, knowing that he can play the backer spot. He worked really hard to learn that. He did fine last year. Uh, we know that we have guys that can also play there, so we're going to see if we can really bring him uh, to the front with his pass rush. Going back to injuries, outside of Ziggy Ansah and Bill Disley, is there anyone you expect to take kind of a longer timeline, or is it mostly those two guys? No, um, uh, we're not sure about Demetrius Knox right now. We're not sure how he's, how he's coming back. Um, We'll see. You know, we'll see. You mentioned before how DK is like a polished route runner right now. Any other young guys impressed you in that way with how they're polished or more technical than maybe you would have thought? Yeah, as we closed out this time, you know, we, we were able to um, get a good look at, at Johnny Ursula. And, and uh, he, he started to feel comfortable and show us the, the kind of the quicks and the change of direction stuff that, that you know, made him one of the big scorers in college football last year. You can see it. Um, he's got a real style to him. He's a, he's a slot guy. You know, it's really, he really is that that. Uh, that mold, uh, and and uh, you know, I, I really like the fact we got the last four days or so. We got Gary Jennings out there to see what he could do. We don't know enough yet; didn't get enough information. But he certainly is big and strong. You know, he looks the part. He doesn't have any trouble running the routes that we're trying to run, and he catches the ball nicely. So, yeah, these guys are gonna. It's how well they handle the uh, the installations. Can they go out and play football and play well? You know, not just get out there, but can they play well and do things right? Uh, it's very, very competitive at this spot. Um, so and we'll see what happens, but th th those guys look really good. With a break coming up, what's the message for these guys on their way out? To to make sure that we really maximize this six-week period. This is a, an extraordinarily competitive time. Uh, so many things can happen. Guys can go south on you. They can get better. They can they really can make it. Uh, changes can occur right now, and we're really trying to be focused about it. Uh, hoping our guys, you know, we've helped them create a plan for their for their off season to make sure that they they they're coordinated, organized. Uh, and they'll they'll max this out. The, one of the big issues, I, I think, this is the big issue that the league just has to you know just kind of live with is is that when you take breaks, you know, you become more vulnerable to getting hurt when you come back. And because the adaptation not not always matches up to the action you know of of uh, of a NFL training camp. And so uh, we're real concerned about that. So the focus, I, I'm not worried. If these guys just get back here and they're like they were, we're going to be fine. <laughs> a lot can happen now. So. Um, we have a lot of guys working out together in different areas, and they know where everybody is. And, and I'm hoping that they'll they'll uh, feed off one another and and uh, and put forth a, a great uh, a great six weeks. There's no reason. There's no reason that every one of these guys shouldn't come back in the best condition of their life. This is the the only season they have in their life, and they should do everything they can to do that. That has been the message, and uh, so they've been challenged to uh, to make the most of this. And I don't know what other teams are going to do, but this is crucial to us that we do a great job here. We'll win games right here in this next six weeks. So. Um, count on When you give them these plans, can you, by league rule, can they check in with you at the progress and all that, or you just give a plan and hope they show up? Yeah, that's basically what it is. We can check in with them, see how mom and dad's doing, and that kind of stuff. You know, we're not talking football at all. Russell, so. I'm sorry, Russell was talking yesterday about how DK is, his understanding of the game has really impressed him. What's been your thought on that? Very natural player. 
Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have any trouble doing anything we're doing. He looks like he's done it before, and, and uh, he's got to get more discipline, and you know, he's got splits and all kinds of uh, rules and things that he's got to get right. But the physical things that Nate's asked him to do, he can do it. You know, I mean, he, he can do it. The route, the, uh, the route changes that we're doing, the adjustments, um, his body control, he, he's, he's really been, you know, a marvelous competitor in this camp now. We've seen plays that every day that look special, and, and uh, most of it comes out of one is his speed, but the other is his catching range and his ability to get out away from his body and get up off his feet and, and make you know really special catches. So we don't see any any re hindrance, restriction at all. He, he's in here competing to play to play and, and how much, you know. So uh, he, I think um, uh, the, the other guy I want to mention that it, it is really David Moore. David Moore made a big jump. He looks he looks like a, a complete guy. We've in the past we've kept David at one spot just to make sure that he could really focus on a spot. It's not like that anymore. He can play any of the spots. He can move around. We're, we're, we're you know uh, motioning him and shifting him and all kinds of things, and he's got it. So um, you know sometimes competition is a beautiful thing and it makes you know brings out the very best and. Uh, um, you can see David has really stepped up. Did he need to show you something to prove that he could handle moving to all those different spots? He had, he had, he's had room to grow. Yeah, I think he was still a young receiver last year, still a young guy. That meaning that you know he might not be quite on the mark on his alignments, maybe missing an adjustment at times or something like that. Just because he's a new guy learning, you know. And you know we know that David came from a, a, a background where he didn't have to do a lot of stuff, just had to go out there and catch the ball and run. And, and uh, he's had to come a long ways. And quite often, if you guys take a look at it, receivers take a couple years. And sometimes they. they, they the three-year rule kind of kicks in for young young receivers, particularly guys that are the true natural athlete guys that things just come easy to. There's a lot of discipline involved in this position, and, and uh, David's made the jump. And we're thrilled about it. He's, he's ready to go and, and really go for it. How's Will Disley coming along? Um, Will, we think Will is going to be ready for camp and, and ready to go. And what we'll do is we'll just make sure before we, we cut him loose. But everything is online. We talked just yesterday that we think he's going to be on track to, to be ready. And the, the decision will be should we start it right from the beginning or should we wait a week or whatever as we just ensure that he's back we do not want to rush this one at all we want to make sure that he's he's a thousand percent confident and ready to go and can make all the, the breaks and the plants and CODs and all that stuff and so we'll you know we'll, we'll take a, a real good look at it but it's really promising that he's going to be ready to go we're, we're totally thinking he's going to be ready to go for the season I have no question about that with Mingo did you plan on having him rush the passer more than he ended up doing last year um, I don't know if we planned on it. We, we had hoped that we would be able to use him some, you know, and, and uh, but he went after the outside back to the Sam spot and, and he, he needed to really dig in. That was a spot that he had played at times but never consistently, so we had to make up some ground with him there. So uh, we wanted to make sure because he was kind of the only guy playing the spot. We wanted to make sure he was really on it. So we just made that decision to really focus there and, and uh, so it took him away from his pass rush. As the season went on, we got some out of him. He did a nice job when he had chances, but uh, I think now this could make a difference. It, there's a, this is a great skill that they try to you know, develop and gain here in, in, in rushing the passer and uh, the time is important, so hopefully that, that'll just make him that much more valuable to us. Either one of our top uh, special teams guys contributed across the board in all phases of it in a, in a huge way and, and uh, we want to make sure we get a good role for him so he can help us on defense. CJ Prosite's okay, or uh, he felt his hamstring a little bit tightened up after yesterday, and and uh, so we just were precautionary, just holding him out. With a guy like David, who's you know learning, who played the X and he's learning the Z, is it just a matter of learning a new set of plays, or is there more to it? Than that? No, it's just the subtleties of, of all the splits and the alignments and the motions and the aiming points, and 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 uh, but he knows the route concepts, you know, because they all do the same stuff there. But it's from a different position, and you you call the exact same play. You're over here. It means an entirely different thing than it does when you're over here. So. Um, it, it's like twice as much learning, and so um, it's just a. It's most excited. We're most excited about the fact that he's obvious. He, he's made the jump, and that's what we look for. Sometimes it happens between that rookie year and sophomore year, and you know, and it, I could have said freshman sophomore, um, but that's you know, it just he's he's ready now, and that's all that counts. He's ready to go. Any, any other sophomores or juniors like that you saw? Right. Um, well, this will this will be a big year for for Trey, you know, and and uh, I mean that was an enormous accomplishment playing his entire rookie season at corner and, and surviving it. Um, it, it we, we're so restricted in what we can do with defensive players in, in these, these camps right here that you really can't tell, you know, they they can't touch the receivers, you know, they can't engage. So they, we just have to wait till camp. This is really offensively oriented in terms of the rules. And so I can't tell you, but I know mentally he's way ahead of where he was. I mean, just, I'm, the things I'm talking to him about now compared to where we were a year ago, it's not even in the same, you know, uh, plane. So, um, but he should make one of those jumps. 
What have you seen out of the backup quarterbacks, you know, the last three days? I, I like the competition, though. And today we just let those two guys go at it and, and uh, kept Russ out uh, for the most part. And they're, they, as of uh, yesterday, I think they both had exactly the same number of pass attempts, you know. So we're getting a good gauge on them, but we're going to have to get to these games. The games are going to be in, really important. The first half of preseason for those guys is crucial for their competitive opportunity. And game three will be, uh, you know, we'll, we'll wind down. Russ will get some more work in that game. So game one and two are really big for those guys. And, and then game four will be a big deal for them, too. So um, we we'll just let it go. I'm really happy with the way they've progressed. They're applying the, 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 the meeting room stuff well on the field. They're handling it. Um, you, you can tell Geno's played a little more. You know, he's been around more. And uh, um, But both guys have the big arm, and they can make all the throws that we're asking in the offense, and they both move well, too. So it's just going to be a wide-open competition. And what we need to do is a really good job of giving them an e equitable shot at it, you know, and reps and the people they work with and all that kind of stuff. And that, that, that'll be a big plan. It reminds me of when Russ was coming up in his first year. You know, we had the whole thing mapped out. Now, I don't think that they're going to catch Russ, but uh, but – you know, you never know. You know, you never know. So that's what competition is all about. So, uh, but those their 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 reps in particular are really going to be monitored strictly to see that we can you know get a great gauge. And let the games begin. Playing naturally, like you said, DK does, and the knowledge of the game that we've talked about. How much can you attribute that to his dad playing in the NFL, and kind of being around? Well, there's you know there's something to that you know. You know, guys, they they lots of times they gain a savvy just from sitting at the dinner table. You know, it happens. You know, and. Uh, he's just a natural player, you know, and, and uh, I know that it's hard. You probably don't think or you wouldn't have expected to hear me say stuff like that because you, whatever you, your impression was of him, um, you know, he was as hyped as anybody could have been hyped through this process. And, and I've said before that I think his hype affected where he got picked, fortunately for us. And uh, um, I don't know. Maybe I don't know nothing. He looks like he's as natural a player as you can hope for. And, and uh, when you have the big size and the speed and you can get up off your feet and you can COD and you can sh fight and shove for the ball too, all that comes to him. So um, we're, not, we're not holding back. We're just going to go and see how far we can go with him and see how much he can earn his playing time. Tyler mentioned that he was impressed with the variety of his releases and the, his work at the line of scrimmage that he actually has at this point in time. And maybe that was a little more than he thought. Yeah, yeah well, he has he has the quickness, quick feet of a of a smaller guy, but he has this marvelous uh, strength and and ability to use his hands that you know guys die for, you know, because he's he's so long. So um, that combination makes him a really adept releaser. He needs to do stuff at the right time, and he has to pick and choose, and that's experience and time and all that. But he has the tools to do all of that. He's shown us extraordinary releases at times just with his quickness, like just like a little guy would do. And uh, um, that, that, you know, it's pretty good. Pretty good. How have you seen the competition from DK, Gary, and John push guys like Keenan, David, and JB? Well, uh, these guys, they practiced great phase two, phase three. Now they've been on their stuff. And uh, it's kind of like when you can feel it, you know, they can feel it. They know that the guys are, they know they're here. And they know that we drafted a few guys to, to make it competitive at the spots, and everybody's battling. Uh, it, it, competition, like I said, is a beautiful thing. <laughs> so. I'm oh, really fired up to Jacob. We got Jacob. Um, he's different, you know. And again, you the guys have been around. You hear me talk. I mean, he this is a different dimension receiver at the at the tight end spot. He, he's a uh, feisty and, and, and aggressive and sticks his head in there. He's got no problem, in, you know, in the how uh, the things we asked him to do in the blocking game. He's not going to be an overpowering blocker. He's 240 pounds, but but. Uh, you can he, he carries his speed well. You see it, and you can feel the change of direction stuff that he, that he has, and so he gives us an, you know kind of another dimension that will be really uh, exciting to see how that fits together in camp time. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.